Hi, this is Miss Delosier, and these are going to be your notes on viral reproduction. I don't actually know that you need to take notes from these. Um, there's going to be, in this quiz later on, there's going to be some specific things that you need to write down. So just leave this available. I'll also post the PowerPoint someplace so you can go ahead and look at it later. So the first thing we need to do is just basically define viral reproduction. So uh, because viruses are not cellular and they're not considered living, they must have a host to reproduce because they don't actually have the enzymes needed to replicate their, uh, their genetic material or go ahead and make proteins. So once the virus gets its DNA, its genome, or its RNA into the host, it then uh, hijacks the host cell, it reprograms the host cell to make more viruses. So it basically takes over. So instead of the host cell making like normal cell proteins and cellular DNA and RNA, it's making viral proteins and viral RNA or DNA. And then those, those uh, viruses are gonna be repackaged into new viruses. They basically just kind of auto assemble together, um, kind of like the Avengers. Uh, and then they're released to infect other host cells. So um, this is a, I mean, it looks super complicated, but it's actually really not. So like you have like the virus entering into the cell uh, and then the viral DNA is coming out and it's being replicated and then you've got some proteins being made and then you basically just have the nucleic acid and the proteins reforming to make new viruses and then they exit. That's that's really the overview of what happens. Now it's going to look more complicated as we get into it because viruses are weird and there's a whole bunch of different types of them and so they don't all replicate in this way but that's what we're talking about. So um, the first thing I actually want to do is I want to look at the viral reproductive cycle that you've probably seen before. This is probably the one that you learned in ninth grade biology, which is the reproductive cycle of phages or bacteriophage. A bacteriophage is this weird looking, um, like it looks like the lunar um, landing module from like the Apollo missions that landed on the moon. So it has a polyhedral head and then it has a helical um, stalk and it has these tail fibery things that look like spider legs on it and they only infect prokaryotic cells they only infect bacterial cells and they have this bizarre life cycle um, that includes two phases not all of them go through both phases but they can't go through both phases so it has the lytic cycle and it has the lysogenic cycle and so you're probably familiar with those at least as like ideas of them but you might not know what they are um, so in the lytic cycle, the first thing that happens, the first thing that always happens is the virus has to attach itself to the host cell, in this case, a bacterial cell. So the phage, the bacteriophage injects like, like a syringe, it's going to inject its, um, its nucleic acid from its polyhedral head down through its helical body into the cell just like a syringe. And then like the capsid, the polyhedral and the helical part just fall off. But the, the nucleic acid, the genome is actually inside the cell now. And bacteria have like just one big circular chromosome. So what happens is like the viral DNA forms its own little circle, right? Like this little blue circle right here, right? So um, there's two things that can happen. The first thing that can happen is it can just stay in the lytic phase. And so it could go ahead and make copies of this blue nucleic acid and then hijack like the prokaryote, the bacteria's ribosomes to make proteins. And then exactly what happens in all viruses happens. It makes copies of the, the nucleic acid. It makes new proteins to make capsid. They reassemble. I made a whole bunch more phages. The cell explodes. The phages come out. That's why it's called the lytic cycle because the cell lyses, right? That's the lytic cycle. What can also happen, what can also happen though, is instead of it saying as this little circular bit, it can go ahead and it can integrate itself into the bacterial genome. So it can actually like cut open the chromosome and like splice itself in there, right? And so then what happens is every time the bacteria divides through binary fission, it's gonna go ahead and make a copy of its DNA. Cause you know, you have to do that when you make a new cell, make a copy of the DNA. So it's gonna go ahead and do that and it's gonna copy the viral DNA over and over and over and over again. So like if it stays in this phase, in the lysogenics phase, then the viral DNA is just basically become part of the bacterial genome. But what normally happens is it'll eventually come out 
and then enter the lytic cycle. So it could go like this. Enter, I'm gonna come hang out, make lots of cells that are infected. Now we're all gonna come out and we're gonna explode and make lots of virus. So some phages are capable of both cycles. Some are actually only capable of just this normal lytic phase. Uh, and that, and that's, that's it. So that's the weird, right? Like what we're gonna talk about now is not as weird as that. All right, so reproduction of animal viruses. So this is a picture from the OpenStax biology book. Um, and you're gonna look at this picture in a little bit more depth. So animal virus reproduction varies depending on what type of virus it is. And I know that that's not a helpful statement, but like depending on if I'm double-stranded DNA or single-stranded RNA, it depends on what has to happen to go ahead and replicate the virus. It also depends on if there's a viral envelope. That depends on like how it actually gets into the cell. So we're gonna be a little bit more specific, but not super specific. So animal viruses with an envelope, we're gonna talk about that. So they've got that outer layer of lipid, right? They're gonna go ahead and they're gonna use that fatty outer layer to enter the host cell. So basically what happens is that outer layer is gonna go and it's gonna merge, right? So see this purple part right here? It's gonna go ahead and oh, and it's gonna pull it in. And so you see here, there's like another purple layer, right? So like it's got another membrane. So once, once that happens, the virus is inside. So the cell thought it was eating something. It thought it was bringing something in like through endocytosis. It thought, oh, my viral envelope is gonna merge with the cell membrane. The cell is gonna be tricked into bringing me inside, right? And then, and then I can go ahead and take over the cell. And the way the virus does that is it's got those glycoprotein spikes on its envelope and they are like we said last week, they're keys, right? And so they trigger specific receptors on the host cell membrane to go ahead and do that endocytosis, to do that bring it inside. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a trick that the virus plays. So that's the basics. Super basics. So if you follow in this one, the virus gets brought inside. In this one, we have the DNA has to actually go inside the nucleus, right? And then we make copies of the DNA and then we assemble. That doesn't happen in all of them though. Like sometimes you go into the nucleus, sometimes you don't. It just kind of depends on the virus. So let's look at HIV because HIV is a weirdo because it is a retrovirus. And you've probably heard of retroviruses before and it's not because they're cool, you know, viruses that are retro. Um, retroviruses are viruses that are made of RNA and they're called retroviruses because that RNA actually has to be in retroviruses. The RNA has to be turned back into DNA. Um, and so if you remember from ninth grade bio, going from DNA to RNA is called transcription. <clears throat> transcription. So to go from DNA to make an mRNA copy, that is transcription. But we're gonna go from RNA to DNA. That's backwards. So we call it reverse transcription. And so the name of the enzyme that does that is reverse transcriptase because ace means enzyme. It's literally all it means. Okay, so we're gonna have a virus. Here's my HIV virus right here at step one. The HIV virus, it's gonna go ahead and attach to the cell. It spikes, recognize this yellow receptor, right? And then its membrane merges and then it comes inside. And so I have my helical capsid, right? And I have my RNA virus, nucleic acid, and I have to make a, I have to make a copy of that that's DNA. So we use the reverse transcriptase to go backwards and make the DNA. And then that DNA gets brought into the nucleus and integrates with the, the, the cell DNA. And then it gets copied like normal and it makes these uh, new viral RNA copies because DNA actually transcribes itself to make proteins. So I made this RNA copies and then we're gonna make some new proteins and then they assemble and then they come out. And so the problem with this is because it actually integrates into the host DNA, it's changing the host cell DNA, and so it alters normal function, right? Now, we're gonna talk specifically about SARS-CoV-2 on Thursday during our live session. Um, because uh, SARS-CoV-2 
the, the virus that causes COVID is an RNA virus, but it does not work this way. It's different because again, viruses are weirdos, right? So, but you do need to know that a retrovirus is an RNA based virus and it uses a reverse transcriptase to go backwards, which is weird. I know. Okay. So that's it. Um, I know that that was a lot, uh, but I wanted to talk to you about it. I am going to be available uh, during office hours. And then I'm also going to schedule like an official time that if you guys want to hop online and just need homework help or questions or whatever, that's not official live day. Okay. All right. That's it.